that's a consciousness that, first of all, that's a lie because everything is moving all the time. Nothing is stuck in cement. We are moving like rapidly toward a, uh, a complete conflict here, a showdown, if you will, a collision between light and dark, a collision that will change everything. We, I believe, you know, I've had enough signs from all this that I believe that we are, you know, it, it's, it's very possible. I'll just put it this way. I won't, I won't say word like, like God's word. I'll just say this. It looks like the word of God in these prophecies has being fulfilled at breakneck speed. And it looks like we have our, our, our fulfillment of Daniel with Obama. So I'm just very interested. I'm very interested in, in, you know, plus we have the other, you know, prophetic things and calendars and such coming to an end at the same time. For example, the Kali Yuga, this is a, that's a big one. Uh, 2025, by most people's estimates. And, uh, you know, the, uh, the, the Mayan 2012, the Hopi 2017, you got, you know, on and on and on. It's between that period of 2012 and 2025 that it looks like something happens. Something's going to happen, something big. And that's why I think you're seeing all the slippage. Time slips, you're seeing uh, um, time-space things with, uh, with, you know, cereal boxes and, and you know, the Mandela effect. It's, 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 it's gone front and center. I had to go to the dentist, you know, and I, I tend to go. I don't like really dental pain, you know what I mean? I've, I've, I've got a problem right now. We're dealing with it. So I jumped on it right away because I just, I'm just not good with that kind of pain. You know, maybe most people aren't, but I mean, I, I, I hate, you know, having to always, it's been, since I've had something, it's been seven years, which is pretty good record. You know what I mean? If that's the case, I'm going to have the choppers in good shape till, uh, till the end. But um, anyway, uh, the dentist himself, you know, he, uh, he and I were talking about uh, <laughs> just the funniest thing. We're all kind of, you know, more friends now because, you know, we're talking about the wolf and the lion, right? In, in, in Isaiah 11. And, uh, and he's, yeah, and I'm saying, well, what about uh, bottles? And we're going through the whole thing. And he couldn't, you know, he only had a couple minutes to talk. But, I mean, he's, he's definitely looked at it and scratching his head right now. He doesn't know what to make of it. Because he remembers specifically, and he's a, he's a real Bible believing evangelical good guy, you know what I mean. But he's very much a church person, and then the the my hygienist is also, and uh, she brought her Bible in, but it was a New King James. I said, well, now we need the King James Bible, and I'll show you a couple of things. But you don't know it well because you you know you New King James. It still says wineskins, for example. So. Um, I told her about it and then she was kind of poo-pooing it and saying that, you know, well, maybe it is, but, you know, God is the one that's, you know, and so she's not really wanting to look into it. And I was taught, then I started talking about cereal, <laughs> cereal boxes and I'm saying if there's a lot of, lot going on, I mean, this is not, you know, the world's, we're getting some warnings here. So we're seeing some signs of things, of changing things. And, um, you know, I can't call this, this, you know, and Kelly's song came forth, you know, that, 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 that's all about the, this, this, uh, changes in, um, you know, the Bible and, uh, as, as perhaps, I mean, her contribution is, and I should really, I should really talk to her here. Um, I said I was going to do that and I will so that she in her own words can tell you what was she was thinking of about this whole subject, which is that, um, I, I think her thesis, at least in the in the in the song, is that uh, God allows the, the word to be the written word to be blurred around the edges. I think is how she put it, um, so that we could wake up to the fact that the word is written in our hearts. I think that's a nice, that's a prophetic statement, as far as I'm concerned, because that that truly has happened. That truly has happened. Now, I saw a word that popped out at me today in reading Rev twenty two which I've, you know, I, I, I was love that chapter, you know, and, it, and the word street popped out at me and it just, it just popped out at me. Like, I don't know if I've uncovered another one. Let's just give that to Rich Keltner and see what he thinks about it and get it out into the, his Bible people. And I'll maybe get it over to Mike Horsey, but I'm probably mistaken there. A street's probably been there. I just, 
I just don't, it just stuck out at me. That's all. I'm not saying it's a, uh, a change at all. And, and cause I, if, if it really is a change, then I'll know, I'll know it, but it's a, um, it's a potential, you know, it's a potential and, um, you know, I don't, I know what they say. They say, well, if other people confirm it, that just means they're jumping into the same trap you're in. It's, it's hitting you weird because, because it's a, there's a demonic spell going on or something. And that, you know, they're jumping that word out at you is odd uh, so that you'll confirm it with other pe- people that it's odd. And then the next thing you know, you have a, a folie a deux or a folie a trois, which is basically means a foolish, you know, foolishness. Yeah, folie a deux is a psychiatric term that means two people start having the same symptoms. One starts imitating the other in, in these outrageous symptoms, you know, like one, say, would walk sideways because that's a mental illness, right? They have to walk with their head sideways so that they, their friend starts walking with their head sideways, too. It's called a folie adieu. And um, or one person has a testimony of being depressed or being raped or what, something, you know, then the other one next and they get a very similar testimony going in terms of what happened. And this can happen with recollection. Yeah, I didn't see it. That street sticks out at me weird, too. You know, do you remember specifically the other word, the re- the word that you thought should be there? And I, I have to admit, I don't have a problem with it, with street. You know what I mean? With it just, it just struck me as odd. Um, not that I remember differently so much, but that it just struck me as an odd, you know, strange word suddenly. And I didn't, you know, my intention was to read, to, would give you, as I was inspired to do, give Revelation 22. Not to not to be stumbling around on the word street. And I, I, we'll get into that later. The minutia does not interest me so much. It's really, where is this going? What does this mean that interests me? And what does this mean via the word of God? And the word of God will be, you know, the prophecies of that book will be fulfilled. And you go, are they adding to or taking away? Why won't God protect the written word? And it's like, well, again, it's been, <clears throat> you know, hasn't really been so much meaning as words with, with but you can still, you still have the meaning. So what, why is this happening? It's causing all of us to look deeply into a subject. And others have, have made more of a career out of it than I'm making of it. I'm, I'm, you know, I've always talked about interdimensionality and all that. Another interesting thing that's happened that, uh, we need to talk about is that the, the New York Times is has an article today on um, gang stalking, and uh, they're saying this guy that's a, you know they're doing a thing they're discrediting it as being as paranoia that you know but they talk about targeted individuals and the community of targeted individuals and you know they think they're being you know that all these people are double agents and they're after them and they're um, you know they're they're wearing uh, you know, they're pre- pretending to be something they're not and they're really just following them and harassing them and, and you know, gang stalking. And, uh, but, but the thing is, I just find that interesting that's in the, the consciousness of the New York Times to do um, a story on it. I haven't been able to get into it in depth yet. My friend pointed out to me today and I'm like, oh, okay, okay, that's, that's a marker. You know, that's a marker. That's something has changed. This is a topic that no one would talk about, but something has changed. I consider it good to bring it out in the light. You know, even if it's negative for now, there'll be more positive. Any publicity is good publicity, especially a topic that's been so, um, so dark, you know, so, so, so much in the dark. And people have been, um, you know, so, so disturbed by this. I mean, I consider gang stalking right in there with the same thing with human trafficking. They're perpetrators. And they get to, and they they run stalkers and stalkers try to ruin your life. You know, they've, they make it so you can't sleep. They make it so you, you know, I mean, I, I did what uh, kind of one on, on gang stalking and, and then, and then mental harassment with the blurry ones that I did, you know, the blurry, blurry ones being anything and everything that prevents you from being able to sleep, right? Cause sleep deprivation is something they use. And then, then, you know, and then gaslighting and, you know, tricks and then, you know, messing with stuff you have and, and doing like a little damage in your car and you thought it wasn't there, you know, just, you know, really it's psychological torture, beaming you with stuff, you know, and, uh, they can tell where you are, by the way, they know where you're driving. You know, if they want to beam you with something while you're driving down the street, that's easy for them. 
you know, it's so funny. Like when I'm online, I mean, this is how well they know you, how connected you are. You know, I'll see a commercial pop up for something I just bought or some kind of thing comes up for, you know, like, like dating service and the people and the, and the girls are my age. Exactly. Or, a, or, or, or there's prostitution too. They say, well, I'm only three minutes away and I'm, you know, they're, the, and they're your age. They're the three minutes away. And this pops up on the phone, you know, and, and it's like, wow, that's, that's weird. So you, you get rid of it and you try to get rid of your footprint. And then, of course, if you bought anything on Amazon or anything, we'll say that some, someone would say, yeah, you got to go to porno sites to get that. No, no, they, 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 if you've been, if you've surfed the net and gone anywhere, like if you've gone to any kind of, uh, uh, looked at any article where there were anything, if you click on anything, you know, you're going to get stuff that, you know, they're your age, your interest or people your age or products of that you would have or serve medical services for something that you, you know, they, they would say, um, uh, you know, it's, it, it's, it's interesting, you know, it's, it's just, it, you get advertising of local places. they a local bakery. Let's say that's just very close to you pops up. And so if they can do that, then they can do, um, pretty much, uh, you're on television 24 seven. You know, I knew this gang stalking thing was going to go public. I knew it was going to go mainstream. I, t- I told people here, I said, it's, it's gone mainstream now. And, it, and it's, it's basically everyone who has a digital footprint at all can be electronically harassed at the very least. And at the most can, can just have their lives ruined from this sort of AI that's there now. You could send people, you can send satellite beams, you could do all kinds of things. You could put it on auto mode, auto, auto targeting and auto harassment. And a lot of that is going on with people on Facebook where they're, you know, or, or like, like with me on, on YouTube where people say, I, I saw you have 10,000 and then it went down to, you know, 200 or something. Uh, yes, that it's, I am uh, definitely, I'm, I'm, I'm using it anyway, but it's obviously connected to something I've said in the past or some radio show I've said in the past or something that they didn't want out. But I assure you, I assure you one thing, everything that I have talked about will be mainstream one day. They cannot stop it because look where it is now. It's the stuff I talked about in 2002 that I got in trouble for with certain people and, you know, discredited from going on uh, public airwaves. I couldn't get the media. I could, I had lost credibility with the media with, they wouldn't have me on anymore. You know, they'd done an article like a Newsweek, or they did, you know, it's across the board blackout on me. Because I was talking about certain subjects they didn't want to talk about. Now it's out there. Not out there as much as I would like, but it's talked about in a normal way. Not in like, and you know what? There's this thing and this happened. These people, they worship the devil and they do this and they do that. Now you can have people out there saying, yeah, they drink blood and they have orgies and whatever. And they kill people, you know, same old, same old. And uh, they just, it's not like, oh, oh my God, we got to do something. And it's like, yeah, they're all corrupt, all involved in human trafficking and everything. So, you know, don't expect uh, law enforcement or anybody else to help you because, you know, they're all, they're all in on it anyway. <laughs> and uh, they go, Real? they don't go out now. Oh, really? You better get on the air and say something. Now it's like, I know, nothing you can do about it. And that's the attitude of the public. They know, they know everything. Everything we talk about here, the public already knows. And, you know, they might not have back then or might have been in denial. But now the uh, thing is, okay, fine, you got me. I knew about it all along, but I don't care. So that's the new one. You know, nothing here is going gonna, is gonna to really inspire me. I really don't care. But the reason I care about it is because I'm looking at it differently. I'm looking at it as these are markers, like prophetic markers, right? This is when the, when the cup of iniquity is full. This is what we're talking about. People looking the other way on all this stuff is the cup of iniquity about full. I'm seeing it full and overflowing. So I say, therefore, big thing is about to happen, something big. Because the cup of iniquity over, overflows. It, the time that was prophesied in the end is now full. So it's ready for the main event. So let's, let's get it on. Curtains rising, you know, on the apocalypse. That's a very short period of time where a lot happens. 
uh, you know, and people are saying, come on, Zeph, let's get on. It's not like it's under my control, but certainly everybody feels that. And, and, you know, it's, it's not like God does something in a vacuum. You know, it's, we, we all kind of see things the same, you know, I cannot speak for the people that don't see these subtle, cause even like my, you know, a dentist, a conservative church going dentist, you know, Bible enthusiast is, is perplexed by the things he's seeing. And of course, I'm sure he's seeing in his church, there's a divide there. You know, the people that are, are saying immediately don't, it's, it's like, you know, don't, don't, you know, you know, burn those records, you know, don't look, you know, or people that are purveying this are of the devil. You should, you know, uh, burn them at the stake or whatever. There's, there's that kind of thing going on. And I think, um, if I'm not mistaken, that guy, Photo Helix had a, a he had a, uh, a video about the backlash and I didn't get to see it because it wouldn't load, but that's, that's a guy that I find interesting. And, uh, cause he's looking at it from scientific and a, um, um, and, a, you know, from a spiritual way and, a, and, you know, from a biblical way and from uh, a science way. And so I could recommend him to you because uh, I think his heart's in the right place. I don't think he's doing anything for personal gain. I think he's just trying to figure it out. But he's going through some kind of backlash, being rejected, you know, some kind of thing. When you're on the truth, whatever it is, you know, like to say this Mandela effect, you know, and grappling with it, which is all we can really do. Um and they want to shame you for grappling with it, now you know you're on the truth. Otherwise, they, the other side wouldn't say anything. You know? Um, it's like you, people's masks have come off. I, I, another prophetic aspect of this. You start seeing who's who and what's what with this thing. Their mask come off. As to, you know, the, the reaction of it. You know, it seems to be a, be a big divide. But a, a divide that's necessary. Right? It's necessary to divide on this. God wants us to divide on this. You know, He wants to put people together who are of, you know, people who want the truth. And then the people that are just saying, it's, it's never going to be changed. God can't change, you know, it can't happen. Uh, I, you know, you point it out to them, they go, yes, I see something happen there, but God's word can't be changed. I'm going to stick with that. This is some kind of trick, and I'm, I'm not interested. Okay, so we divide on that. We divide on that. And that's necessary because God's got, got to gather, you know, it has to be birds of a feather because God has to gather people that he can use for certain thing. I mean, when, when you have, when we're searching out the Bible and, and searching out scripture and different thing, different scriptures, um, with the purpose of trying to, you know, figure it out with other like people in the same, it makes it easy you know, to arrive at certain things and to get certain things done because we're, we're on the same team, if you will. We're able to get something done. If, if it's constant fighting and everybody is fighting and nobody agrees, then it's very difficult to get anything done. You know what I mean? Because, you, because people are arguing, you know, you, 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 you know well, you shouldn't be, yes, you should. You know, the fundamental thing itself, you, you can't get going. So there's, um, you know, now there's two groups. There's one group that is searching it out and searching the scriptures and, and they're in their Bibles a lot, which is we're all in our Bibles a lot now, which is probably pretty good, right? Just God's moving us that way, wanting to show us some things. I think what he's showing us is like, get ready, this is it. I mean, this end game right here. That's what I think he's showing us. He's, he's showing us things like, like the, I call it the Jacob's ladder effect now because I'm seeing the Jacob's ladder thing happen. And the mass shooting was like a Jacob's ladder thing, right? And, uh, and, and, but we've had them before. But this particular one is a little bit different, but we're seeing kind of like the people reacting to it and stuff. It's like demonic, demonic stuff. You know, people react in a way that makes no sense, that, that they had not reacted uh, before. You know, so this is a, uh, <laughs> you know, this is a, uh, oh, what can I say? This is a, there's no going back to the, to the way it was. You know, we're just going to have to see this thing through. I don't know where we are time space wise. You know, it's Earth. Not quite the same as it was. I